Hi, I'm Alex, and today I'm going to talk to you about Grammarly and how it improves my life and how it might improve yours too. I'm going to split this video into three sections. I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about me and my use case so you can understand where I'm coming from. I'm then going to talk about the software, both for free and as a premium version, how much it costs. And finally, I'm going to talk about practically how it saves me time, improves my credibility and makes me money. If that sounds of interest, please stick around for the video. So I'm a financial advisor and business owner, and of course, part-time YouTuber in the UK. I send out a lot of email communications, a lot of replies on YouTube, a lot of texts, and importantly, I'm dyslexic. So I've always had a bit of an issue with my confidence, with my spelling, with my grammar, and sometimes my sentence formation and structure. So from a practical perspective, that's how I sort of communicate day to day and why I use Grammarly and it's very important to me and giving me the confidence to communicate. If Grammarly is of interest, I'm going to leave an affiliate link in the description below. So for free, Grammarly checks your spelling, grammar and punctuation. It's available as a browser extension, on the web as apps and even in Microsoft Word and Google Documents. So Microsoft Word and Google Documents do have spelling and grammar checked in them, but simply Grammarly is better and in addition to the built-in options, if you're looking to improve the consistency of your spelling and grammar, then signing up to Grammarly's free version really is a no-brainer. So I'm gonna put a little warning in here, both serious and not really that serious. So there really is no downside to the free version. Apart from Grammarly don't make any money from it. And from a practical perspective, from their business model, it's to get you hooked so that you want to use the premium version, which they do softly sell you while you're using the software. I'd started off using the free version myself and I was encouraged to use the premium version. I don't regret it at all. I think it's a great service, but if you really, really don't want to use the premium version under any circumstances, you might want to give a little bit of consideration as to whether or not you sign up to the free version at all. But notwithstanding that, I think the software is great. Okay, so then what does premium cost and what does it do? Well, the premium has three different payment options, monthly, quarterly, and annual. Overall, the annuals are a lot cheaper. So I've just signed up for the next 12 months and I've paid £109.85 for one year. Now, if I click here where it says manage your plan, you can see that it says £9 something per month for the annual, although you have to pay it in one lump sum. It says quarterly works out to £15.69 per month. Uh, you have to pay it as a £47.06 uh, lump sum once a quarter. And the monthly is £23.51. So they are very much encouraging you to go for the annual subscription. It's an awful lot cheaper if you do it at that way and that cost. In terms of that, um, so if I go back up to the top here, you can see here that it's actually quite, quite a useful way. It shows you examples of everything here. So it's worth going on the website to see the difference. But it says that obviously gra grammar, spelling and punctuation are checked and everything. But then consistency in spelling and punctuation and fluency are all then checked in the premium version. There's also a business version, which I'm not going to cover here, which is if you're looking, if you're a large organization and you want everyone to talk the same, then you can use that. But that's not really most people's use cases. So again, it talks here, you can just hover over, see examples in helping with clarity, engagement, delivery. You, you've sort of, it really is useful in terms of the amount of ways it can help suggest and change the way you write. Uh, you can see here that there's so many ways to access Grammarly. There's almost more ways. It's almost easier to tell you ways in which you can't use Grammarly than in which you can. So from my perspective, the, the free version is absolutely great. For free, checking your grammar, spelling and punctuation really couldn't be better. But if you're looking to take your writing to the next level, if you're looking to help with the consistency of your own writing and point out whether or not things are clear enough, then Grammarly is really, really useful. 
What it says here, you've got plagiarism detection. Now, personally, I don't use it, use that service because that's not, doesn't work with my workflow. But if you're a writer, if you're a student, then unlimited plagiarism detection could be really, really useful. So hopefully that helps understand the difference between the free version, the premium version, and what the costs are. So I honestly can't think of a downside to using the free version of Grammarly. And the only downside I can see to using the premium version of Grammarly is the cost, and it isn't that cheap. But why do I use Grammarly, and why might you want to also? So from a practical perspective, I've always had a lack of confidence, I'm gonna say rightly so, in terms of sending out emails and notes to, to clients and, and important things, you know, applying for jobs, even when I was doing my studies. And I always got someone else to check all of my work, which took up more of my time and more of their time. Now, Grammarly won't make your work perfect. It just, it's very good. I'd say it improves my writing by 90%, there will still be some errors and some issues. So if it's for a life-changing event that you're writing something, still get someone to check it over. However, from a practical perspective, day-to-day, -day, most communications aren't life-changing. They just need to be good enough. And Grammarly makes sure, for me, that things are good enough. It's much better than the default settings in Word or in Google Documents. And for the cost for the premium version, what it gives me is confidence in sending out communications. It makes my time quicker. It saves other people time. And I really, well, I value my time. And I think importantly, if you're looking to get to a stage where your time is worth more, investing in Grammarly and saving that time now and improving the communication that you're putting out is absolutely key. We live in a world where handwriting, where reading, where everything like that is so important. And Grammarly is a little bit of a game changer to help you level up if that's an area you struggle with. So what I wanted to do here is give you a short example of Grammarly working in Google Documents. So you can see here that Google's is highlighted. This is just me I typed out before didn't give much thought to it. it says this is an example uh, of working here and I'm going to give you an example of it working in Google Documents. I did try and misspell something but Google's internal spell check fixed it automatically which made me smile. Now it's telling me something wrong with Google's. Now what I can do here is click here and it tells me everything that it wants to change about this document. So if I click on Google uh, it tells me that it wants an apostrophe there which sounds sensible. Uh, now, interestingly, under this, it says that it's unclear in terms of what it's referring to, because this says this is an example, but I haven't specified what it is. So um, I, I'm not going to change that now, but it does go to that level in the premium version. So if I click on and, it says put a comma there. If I click on uh, but, it says a comma there, and it says a comma there. Now, it's given me a few different things. So if I'm going to say... Um, that's given me a suggestion here. Uh, I am going to, so it's saying actually be <laughs> a better phrase would be will. So as uh, that works for me, I will give you an example. And now I have given you an example. I won't fix this just now because it says rewrite sentence, but that gives you a good idea of how Grammarly Premium works. And a lot of that is also in the free version too, when it's checking spelling and the punctuation. So before I summarize, I'm gonna say thank you for watching the video to this point. If you've liked the video, hit the like button. And if you wanna become a part of a community of like-minded individuals who want to improve their lives, who want to help each other, then hit that subscribe button. In terms of Grammarly, my summary is, there really is no reason not to give the free version a try if you're not using it already. The premium version, from my perspective, is well worth the money. And the only issue I've got with it is that I only started using it in 2016. I wish I'd used it earlier, and I wish the technology existed when I was in school, because I think it really would have given me confidence in my writing and just helped me in my earlier stages of career. So if you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer. Until next time, I've been Alex. Thanks.